guys, it's Julia. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be just a chatty get ready with me doing this here look that you see on my face right now and answering all your school related questions. So I asked you guys on my Instagram story to send in all your UCLA slash pre-med slash freshman year slash any education related questions. And I want to sit down, do my makeup on camera and talk about probably the most important thing in my life. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I unfortunately did a terrible job of talking about the products I was using while I was putting them on my face. So everything I use will be down in the description box. And this week's notification gang shout out, the Dew Fairy of the week is Annabelle. Annabelle is one of my most dedicated subscribers, usually the first person to like my tweets. Sis has Twitter notifications on and that, I'm annoying on Twitter, so that's something. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you wanna see this look being made or if you wanna see me talk about my entire freshman year at UCLA, Please keep watching. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna start off with the Laneige Glowy Makeup Serum as my primer. And starting off with the first question, you are obviously very pro-education, but do you think college is a must for everybody? This question I wanted to put first on the list just because I feel like it sets the base for all the other questions. The simple answer is absolutely not. Um, Obviously, education is a huge part of my life, and that's why I love sharing it. It is because it's a huge central part of who I am and how I see myself. But I definitely don't think that college has to be a part of everyone's life path. I know some of my followers are international, so the American education system maybe doesn't make a ton of sense to most people. To be honest, as an American, it doesn't even make sense to me all the time. But basically, the way it's set up right now is that we're kind of expected to know what we want to do at the age of 18. Which is kind of crazy, just because I knew what I wanted to do since the age of, like, 15 doesn't mean that other people do. So the way it's set up right now, I think that college is really great for people who either know what they want to do straight out of high school and know that that path is going to require a degree, or for people who maybe don't know what they want to do because still having that base of an education, having a degree opens doors in the future for when maybe you do figure out what you want to do. At least here in America, a lot of like good entry-level jobs with decent salaries and decent employee benefits do require some kind of degree. I think it's something that can be really beneficial and even if you don't end up going into that field that you major in, I still think that having that degree and having that basis of that life experience because college is more than just getting a degree. I think having that can be a really good basis. But I think that if you know what you wanna do straight out of high school and you know that that path maybe doesn't include a degree, then I definitely don't think that college is a must for you. I also don't think that four-year degrees are a must for everybody. I think college should very much be personalized to you and your experience and what you need. For me, I knew that I wanted to go to a four-year university straight out of high school and that's what I did. I didn't do like a transfer program or anything. I didn't start at a community college, but I think that the American community college system, particularly in California, is a really amazing system and an amazing way to save money. It's really all about you and what you need, what you want to get out of your education. So while I strongly believe that finishing high school is a must for everyone, I don't think that college is. And that kind of brings me into like why I speak so much and so often about my college experience and education in general, which might seem kind of paradoxical to who I am because you guys know I'm very private about most of my private life, but education is something that I've always been a little bit more vocal about than other parts of my personal life. And that's because Hello, <laughs> makeup free editing filter Julia here because I did not like the way that I explained it in the video and while I was editing I was like yeah, I might as well just refilm it and say it in a more succinct and less stuttering way. So basically what I was meaning to say was um, the reason that I kind of share my educational journey and make it kind of a central part of my channel is that um, basically when I was really getting into YouTube as a viewer, so like my junior year of high school I would say, there was a big trend of like creators in my generation, which is Gen Z, kind of my age group, um, dropping out of high school once they got really big. I think there were like three main people who did this in quick succession of each other and I feel like that really created a culture of like LMAO, become a YouTuber, drop out of high school, it's a cool life. Um, and I think in a way, whether it was intentional or not, that kind of culture became synonymous with my generation in like influencer slash social media culture. And I think we've seen that kind of reflected in, I think especially this year, there was like a trend on TikTok where people were showing off how they like cheated on their AP tests, which college board sucks, I will say that. But um, I don't think we should like glorify cheating or anything. Anyways, that's going off topic. I like to share, I don't know, I guess just like being Gen Z and liking school, it doesn't make you uncool. If I can push back against that culture that's become kind of synonymous with my age group in any way, I like to, but 
I don't want to do it in a judgy way and I don't think that again I don't think college is for everybody and I don't think that it should be pushed on people who don't want to do it um, I just want to share something that's really important to me and for me this is like a huge part of my life and who I am so not necessarily like a college dedicated channel by any means but it's something that I want to make a central part of my message because to me it's one of the most important parts of my life okay I didn't really say what I was doing in that step I basically took the bite beauty change maker foundation and I spot foundation so what I've been doing recently instead of putting foundation all over my face on the parts of my skin where I don't actually need extra coverage or don't need any smoothing just focusing foundation on like my cheeks or my chin wherever I need to cover stuff up I feel like it just looks a lot more natural so this is a technique I got from Smitchery and I think it's been working wonders I got a lot of questions about being a pre-med and or stem student so the next question is do you like being in a competitive field <laughs> yes I I'm a naturally competitive person like put me on a trivia game night and we might not be friends after that. Um, I do try and distance myself from other people who are kind of of the same level of competitiveness just because I find it really toxic to be around those people. So I personally, one of the best pieces of advice that I got in freshman year from my mentor was make friends who are not in your same field. I think it's only natural out of habit to seek out people who have the same interests as you. So but personally for me, I think it's really valuable to have friendships with people who are not in STEM or not pre-med just so I can A, get like actual exposure to other majors and other interests. I feel like you're able to just like learn a lot more from your friends in that respect. But also I feel like your friends need to be kind of an escape from academic life. And when you're constantly around people who are striving for the same limited spots that you are, um, it can be exhausting and it's only natural to compare yourself to others. So yeah, while I do love the kind of competitive nature of the STEM field and pre-med in general, I definitely don't think that it's A, gonna be for everybody and B, I think that it can be very, very toxic if it's like literally your entire life. So I think the biggest thing I can say to that is that pre-med is really a race, not a marathon. And over, especially if you're at a four year university, you're gonna see the pool of people that are in your field thin out a lot as people realize that maybe it's not for them. Most people are going to change their major. Some people will change their entire field that they wanna go into halfway through college. And that's totally okay and totally valid. And it can be kind of scary slash lonely, especially if like maybe friends that you started off in the same field with decide to sw switch halfway through and suddenly you're alone or suddenly you're in a much smaller pool of people and you wonder like, did I make the wrong decision? Am I being stupid staying in this? I, I find comfort knowing that it thins out to the people who really, really want it. And I think my like kind of outlook towards my education changed a lot when I stopped looking at hard classes as like weeder courses and more as tests of how much I really want what I'm trying to do. I'm going to go ahead and cream contour. I've been using my Anastasia contour cream kit a lot more recently. I don't know. I've just kind of fallen back in love with these textures. Next question is, was it a hard change from high school work to college work? Absolutely. <laughs> at risk of sounding too cliche, because I know like the trope of college professors being like, this isn't high school anymore. I think the biggest change is that college work is a lot more independent. College is more independent in general. So those without self-motivation, I find really will struggle, especially if you are pursuing a career or a field that you don't actually want to do if you're pursuing something for the sake of your parents. I feel like to a certain degree, you have to be somewhat interested in what you're learning in order to do well. Just in general, college, you do have a lot more free time than you do in high school because you can choose your own class schedule. You can choose, oh, maybe I don't want to have any classes in the morning, so just afternoon classes. For me, I'm taking classes three days a week and I have a four day weekend. It's lovely. So for that reason, because of the added element of control that you have over your college education, I feel like it's a lot easier to kind of rig it against yourself and make it a lot more easy to feel complacent. I also think that you kind of have to accept, um, especially in freshman year, that to a certain degree, if you're taking lower division classes, especially if you're at a larger university like I am, with huge lectures, hundreds of classmates in your lectures, your professor, mostly doesn't give a shit about how you do in the class. It was drawing for me coming from high school where I, um, I'm not gonna say it was a teacher's pet, but I really, I really valued getting close to my teachers and really building relationships with them, especially because obviously you're in their class for the entire year and then coming to college where you really, you don't get that same level of interaction. And of course people are gonna say, yeah, you can go to office hours and stuff, but it's not the same. You're an adult and professors are not going to view you like a kid. And I think to a certain degree and to a very big degree, that's a really good thing. I think it's great for personal responsibility. I just think it can be very jarring for people who really do value that kind of personal connection. So I think if that's something that's really important to you and if you feel like you need more hands-on interaction with your instructors in order to get the most out of your education, I think that definitely going for a smaller university is going to be a lot better fit than say, <laughs> 
Ookla. So I think that and the schedule thing were just kind of the biggest adjustments. Um, having a lot more control of my schedule, personally for me, I really enjoyed that. Um, I didn't get a lot of free time in high school, so I actually found, contrary to what I believed, that I actually had more time to do YouTube and really invest into my part-time job and also add on some other extracurriculars, whereas in high school, because of that like very regimented daily schedule, I didn't really have as much free time as I would have liked to. But of course, with that added control comes with the added responsibility of how you leverage that added control and extra time um, and I feel like a lot of people kind of take this newfound sense of freedom and forget to be responsible and use that time in a good way. Once again I have gotten too invested in the topic of the try to get ready with me and I've completely just given up on trying to tell you guys what I'm actually using in terms of products so again I will have everything down below in the description box what I'm using on my face but it's gonna be a pretty <laughs> boring makeup look anyways except for the eyes so you probably don't care. I think I'm gonna do like an all cream face for my cheek products. Just go for a very dewy, like aggressively glowy look. Um, so I'm gonna go in with the Huda Beauty Tantor Bronzer for my bronze. The next question is, did you find any extracurriculars that helped you expand your knowledge in the field? Um, yes, but I don't think that as a freshman you necessarily need to like have a ton of extracurriculars or like load up your schedule already. I'm glad to be like getting a head start, especially in terms of like research and um, having experiences to put on my resume, but I don't think that you need to do that in your first year. I'm only starting earlier because I'm planning on graduating earlier. So yes, obviously I have my job at the hospital, which currently is paused. Also doing independent research has been really valuable to me. I just submitted my capstone research project for my first year. That was such a new experience because I'd never really participated in any type of like lab stuff or research whatsoever. But again, I think most of the good research opportunities are really um, as they should be sequestered to upperclassmen. I think that's how it should be. In a couple weeks at the beginning of July, I'm starting a summer internship, which I'm really excited about. Um, not gonna talk about that quite yet on my channel, I don't think. Getting opportunities in your freshman and sophomore years are pretty much the only times in college where like high school achievements really matter or apply. And by that, I mean not standardized test scores or anything, like nobody cares about your SAT score in college, but like having extracurricular experiences from high school or leadership positions from high school that you can carry over to show people that you have somewhat experience. But on extracurriculars, I do wanna say, I think that you need to be judicious in what you do spend your time on. I feel like a trap that a lot of underclassmen, including me, fall into is just kind of overloading their plate and literally jumping at like any opportunity that comes your way because you're scared that you're not gonna get other ones in the future. I don't think that it's a good thing to just take any extracurricular opportunity and start doing it because quality is so much better than quantity and you don't wanna just like overload your plate with a bunch of small things when you could really be dedicating a lot of time to one major thing that you could do throughout your entire experience rather than just like doing whatever. And I think that applies to like everything. So like I could give that advice to baby influencers and be like, don't take every sponsorship that comes your way. Be selective and you will not regret it in the long run. By the way, blush that I'm using right now is from Tower 28. This is the Beach Please Happy Hour um, Luminous Cheek Tint Blush. I'm gonna be reviewing a bunch of things from Tower 21 very soon, but this, I mean. But she's so beautiful. She's a mammoth, of course. Stay tuned for the review though. I do have a lot of thoughts about this brand. And for highlighter, I'm grabbing the Tower 28 Super Dew Shimmer Free Highlight Balm in the shade, no shade. Um, it, literally no shade because it's a clear, like sheer balm. This is something I have mixed feelings on right now. I'm testing it out and I do think that it doesn't play very well with foundation. So you definitely want to do this on a more natural beat, but I don't have foundation on my upper cheekbones today, so I'm just gonna pat some of this in. As you can see, it's not like a blinding glow, it's just kind of like a wet, dewy sheen, which is pretty, but it's not gonna be for everybody. So I think this is a kind of confusing product, but I've been exploring it and enjoying exploring it. <laughs> Next question is, how did quarantine affect your lab classes? This is a question I would have asked a quarter ago because I really was not sure how um, remote learning was going to affect my spring quarter learning. So currently I'm taking an OCHEM lab right now. I'm gonna be taking a psych research lab over summer at UCI. And then I'm taking another OCHEM lab and those are all gonna be remote, like online. Short answer. It's just a disgrace. It's not great. TBH, like, I really don't feel like I'm learning as much as I could be um, if I was doing it in person. Basically how it works is we watch the experiment being done in the lab over Zoom, so the entire class gets the same data set and then we have to work with that same data. Whereas if we were doing it in person, we would be doing the experiments in the lab and then having our own data that we would experiment with. So they did change the kind of focus in the system of the class in that 
the grading is predicated much more on how well we analyze the data, whereas if it was in person, it would be much more graded evenly between how well we analyze and then how well we actually carry out getting that data. It's much more assessing our math skills and like how well we comprehend the actual concepts rather than like our chemistry skills and how well we're able to follow directions in lab. Interesting, it's definitely a different way of approaching a lab class. I don't think I'm learning nothing, but I also don't feel like I'm learning as much as I could be in person. So it's not ideal, but I've quickly learned throughout my one quarter of um, remote learning that how much I learn in these classes right now is really up to me. Doing classes online, it's really easy to just kind of skate by and not put a ton of effort in and still get decent results. But you can also take active steps to prosper in these classes and actually take something out of it. And that does take a little bit more effort, but especially since a lot of schools, it's looking like most schools in California are going to be on remote learning for either the fall quarter or fall semester. I just need to try and remember that it's really up to me how much I learn in these classes because for me, I found it really, really easy to lose motivation doing online classes. Okay, I popped off to do my eyebrows because no one wants to see that. I'm doing a look inspired by Japanese beauty, so um, <laughs> Finally, a makeup look that my family will be proud of, but I'm not sure how well this is gonna go, so we'll see. Question number six is, is it hard to be a woman in science who likes makeup and clothing? Um, absolutely. I definitely don't think it's as bad at UCLA as it is in maybe other places. I've kind of had to ask myself because I have, over the past couple months, really pared down the amount of makeup that I wear to class, um, and I had to kind of ask myself, like, am I actually doing this for the reason that I'm telling myself that I am, which is that I just don't wanna uh, wake up early in the morning and get ready, or am I doing it kind of out of an internal fear that I'm not even willing to acknowledge verbally to myself of being judged for how I look and how I present myself? Because obviously here online within this community that I built for myself, we all know and we all respect that women can be multidimensional and that I can wear Prada and a full face of makeup and still be just as smart as I am when I'm in a lab coat with no makeup on. I've been told that I'm too happy or too smiley or too bubbly or too nice to be a doctor. I told people that I'm planning to go into healthcare professions and people automatically assume I'm going into nursing. You gotta pick your battles and you have to kind of just choose like, am I gonna get upset about this right now or should I just focus on myself and focus on my end goal and not let this distract me? There's a statistic that's thrown around a lot that women make up the highest proportion of college graduates right now and are almost like 50-50 in the healthcare field, which I think is amazing, which is amazing, but I definitely don't think that it reflects the kind of stigma that the academic world has against um, multi-dimensional woman who can be more than one thing. If I wanna roll up to class in a full face of makeup and set the curve on a chemistry test, you can't stop me, but you can judge me all the way. I really did something here. Okay, unfortunately what I did here, I cannot do on my other eye while talking to you guys. So let me finish my other eye and we'll be back in a second. Okay, I ended up going <laughs> a little harder on the eyes than I was planning on it but um, we're just gonna roll with it, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. It's 100% fine. Question number seven is, what is the best investment that helps you get through college? Um, therapy? No, I'm kidding. Um, well. No. Well. <laughs> I think a good, reliable laptop is a huge must and not just for doing online classes. Like, I mean, actual IRL stuff. I think having a good piece of technology to um, do assignments on. This is a major one that no one ever talks about. Having a good printer in your dorm room. Life-changing. I don't know about other people's campuses, but I do know that it's pretty common to only have printers that you have to pay to use, which I think is dumb. So in my room, my roommates and I, we all shared one printer that you could just plug into the wall and then you have a USB that you attach to your laptop and you print whatever you want. And that was seriously life-changing. For me, because I have insomnia, something that was a really good investment for me was um, noise-canceling headphones during the nighttime. I wish this was not the case, but people are gonna be loud. That's just living in dorms. And so those are like my freshman year essential must-haves. Um, and then something that you shouldn't buy, your textbooks in your first week of class. Watch my last video if you want context on that one. Question number eight is, have you been straight laced so far or do you party slash do you wish you had time to party? Um, yes, I have time to party. Again, because of the kind of flexibility of being able to design your own schedule and um, really have more free time. Granted, I do fill up a lot of my free time with working, but 
I feel like there's a huge stereotype that if you are in the STEM field, you just like never have time to do anything fun ever, which is 100% not true. Like 100% not true. You're going to have a lot of time to do whatever you want. And honestly, you should take that time to do stuff for fun in college. But I do have some rules with myself. So I never go out if I still have work to do that needs to be finished because then I can feel just like have a lot more fun and not have to like worry about things in the back of my head. I throughout my entire freshman year did not pull a single all-nighter and I, I didn't really do that a lot in high school in general. Um, for me, I just, I find that to be like really not a good use of my time because there's only a couple hours where I'm actually being productive and then the rest of the all-nighter I spend like tired and doing half-assed work. I also, I don't do drugs, I don't smoke, that's just not something that I really enjoy. So you will have time for whatever you want to do. Um, it's all about just how you prioritize that time. And then last but not least, there were just a bunch of related questions I kind of condensed into one thing, which was general major key tips. <laughs> or just, I guess, general big takeaway lessons I've learned so far. By far the biggest thing, the advice that I've given to all my incoming freshman friends right now. And obviously it doesn't apply at the moment because I'm not living on campus, but that is to be nice to all workers in res life. You would think this should go without saying, I shouldn't even have to say to like, be nice to the people who are working in the place that you are living. So talking to and being nice to and saying please and thank you to the dining hall staff, especially if you like frequent the same dining halls often and they start to kind of like recognize your face. For me, I would go to the same dining hall every morning for breakfast. But on top of dining hall staff, don't neglect like the custodial staff and the res life staff, the maids who clean the dorm rooms every week, plumbers, everybody. Say hi to them because I feel like, especially in your first year, living in the dorms can kind of not feel like you're living there. It kind of feels like an extended stay in a hotel to a certain extent but the people who work on campus in the residence areas are just as much a part of the community as the students and it's appalling to me how many of my classmates I saw just like not treating them like they were a part of the community and not being polite to service workers but once I get back to campus that is something I'm hoping to see in the incoming class of freshmen I'm just gonna give myself a light mist with the fourth ray beauty glisten up mist but those are all the questions that I had to answer. I hope you guys enjoyed the watching this. By the time you're watching this, I should be in finals week. And I'll, after that, I'll be done with my freshman year for good. Even though I kind of feel like my freshman year ended with quarantine starting, make sure you are subscribed down below. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Turn on your notification bell. And if you comment the bell emoji, you may be next week's do fairy. And if you made it to the very end of this video and the very end of the school year with me, you get the bonus meme. Love you. Pro tip, best place to hide money? Now the only people who can steal from you are people with taste.